So you want the the cutting edge DK technology? I got you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's exactly. And also on certain characters like Falco, you know, um, mm -hmm. Bayonetta, like just ways of like that you punish them and how you approach doing things to them. Falco and Bayonetta. Okay. Yeah, Fal Falco is hard. It's one of those things where. Uh, it's one of those neutrals where you pretty much have to walk and parry lasers because he could literally just stop you from trying to go for dash attack if he's, if he's lasering. So that's a problem. Uh, and then when you find an opening, uh, in that, that matchup, I usually... Yeah, I, I really don't think about dash attack nearly as much because you really just can't get close to him with it. So I rely more on getting sort of close to Falco and then like reading his jump option or reading his defensive option. and. As you probably remember from last time, I'm a very down B heavy player. Uh, th that's good though against a character like Falco because he wants up close things like uh, he wants falling air, falling forward air. He wants up, to, well, specifically on the ground, he wants up tilt. And we don't want to be anywhere close to his grab or up tilt. So that's why I feel like this is a nice, really pre pressuring option where it kind of just keeps people away from you that want to try to grab you or get close to you. So. Um, but against Falco, honestly, it's just, it's a struggle. You're pretty much just trying to avoid getting your shield hit or just avoiding shielding in general. You kind of want to space him out um, with attacks uh, because if you ever get caught in your shield, it doesn't really matter if you parry or not because his aerials, like his nair is just hitting so many times that it's just going to put you in a bad situation. Um, because then he can fall with an air straight into the up tilt, which is also multi-hitting. So that's not a situation you want to deal with. So I would play, you know, mid-range. Just keep keep Falco out. It's a lot of back air in that matchup. Um, obviously, if you find opportunities, then we go for dash tag. I don't like to ever say don't use dash tag at all. Because absolutely, you need to use um, dash attack. Jiffy Jams, thank you for the sub. No problem, man. Appreciate, appreciate it, appreciate it, dude. No problem. Um, yeah, yeah, so show me some things that you use to rack up damage against DK that you Oh, absolutely. To. This is just in general, like, things that you should do, like, uh, we may or may not have looked at this last time, but if you're ever, this is great, like, when you're in disadvantage as DK, uh, you could do that. Uh, you could, that's actually a kill combo on certain characters. That, uh, was, that, that was pretty sweet. Yeah. As, it's a little stylish. I mean, this puts you into percent for for this to kill. So that's the thing. Like, when you do these kinds of combos that start off with, like, dare or you could do this. And now you're at 65. Most characters would be in death percent for me now going like this. And then you trip. And then I go like this. PDK. Um, or trip into giant punch if the percent's a little lower. Um, yeah, I'm just SDing after every stock, yeah, so we go back down to zero. But you could kind of, it's all variable. Um, say you start at like, you grab them at like this percent. You're not going to be able to do double back air at this percent. We can talk about percents a little bit. I just wanted to like kind of showcase a little bit first. So at this percent, this would be the ideal time to go for, to go for that. Um, that's the perfect percent for that and notice it puts you right into 84 which is now pdko percent the exact minimum um so yeah so ba basically if you have someone at zero uh just think of all your ways that combo into grab obviously dk's grab is his most powerful uh combo tool because he has so much creativity out of it can do so much explosive damage out of it so you could do there are a lot of different ways you can combo into grab you could do weak dash attack grab you can do down air fast fall grab and pretty much whatever you want to do after that but double back air is the optimal combo uh back air down air is more when you know that your opponent is mashing like what i mean by mashing is if they're like a mario or a ness or a yoshi and you get them in the back air back air but when you do the first one you know that they're in disadvantage if they're trying to mash anything it's probably nair or some sort of button and if they're doing that they're gonna land on this platform so you could go for the down air and then get the follow-up grab and then any other character that's not a super heavy you can get an aerial cargo up throw up air and it will kill off the top 
Um, nice. Yeah, I, I usually don't opt for the pivot grab and like try like an up tail or up air up smash, mm -hmm. but I should re grab them. Uh, yeah, it depends on the height that you bounce them. So, this particular height that I got you before, you'll notice how it's so easy to go for a re grab here. Oops, I was gonna say I got you. Actually, that does kill if you do the optimized aerial cargo up throw up air. Um, optimized meaning you just do a delayed toss, uh, which is a little different than an instant toss. So this is the delayed toss. Uh, let me see. All right, one more time. Obviously, you didn't go very high there. I just wanted to show you that I'm delaying, I'm jumping, and then I'm tossing you slightly later. Instead of jumping and tossing you immediately, that's the instant toss, and then the optimized toss is the jumping and slightly delaying the toss. That way, it maximizes the distance that you get to travel, and then you get to also, when you up air, you're hitting them at the peak of their knockback. The highest possible uh, point that they can be in the air is when you're connecting the up air, and that's why I can KO earlier. Um, oh, okay. I yeah, I'm pretty bad at doing the PPK. Like I, I can do it and I get it, but I want it to always be like perfect. Yeah. Like, I'm so that it. I think that's something that maybe we should take a look at. I would like to take a look at your execution for it. So you could get me to like get me to like 90% or something. Just go ahead and rack up some damage on me, and then I want to just see how you execute it, and then we can like we could quickly I could just tell you what you have to clean up or what's a little late, what's perfect timing, what's this, what's that. So all right. Yeah. Just go ahead. Rack up some damage here. And then probably get me to around. This is perfect. So now I want you to go ahead and SD so that you can re refresh your moves. Because you're going to need your cargo up throw and stuff to be fresh. Um, also, I'm going to do random DI here. So yeah, go ahead and go for your PDKO. Yeah. So uh, the most important step to this is going to be following the dust trail. So obviously when characters are launched in this game, there's a trail of dust that shoots out. So when you throw someone, you want to follow that with your body immediately. So uh, I want you, when I throw you here, I want you to hold completely left and watch how much it changes the angle. Yeah. So uh, it didn't look like you went very far left that time, maybe because the cargo up throw was a little stale. I I'm not sure which, but uh, so go ahead and rack up some more damage on me again. And I'm this time, yeah, I'm, again, I'm going to DI, oh, jeez, that was actually sick. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, one more hit should be fine. Yeah, that's good. This is good here. So now go ahead and SD, get your, refresh your Haro up throw and your up airs and stuff. So... Now, again, the most important thing for you to do before you go for this combo is to make sure that when you jump, um, you could jump straight up if you want with your first jump, but your double jump should change your tra trajectory to follow where they went. So, uh, but if you can, I would suggest following the dust cloud initially with your first jump and then also with your double jump, use that to like micromanage and just make sure that you're in the right spot. So rather than jumping straight in place, uh, it helps if when you do your first full jump, like, oh, they went to the left, jump and hold left. That way, it, you can even hold full left if you want. Obviously, if you just did a full jump and then that was it, you're going to go this way, but you're going to hold left and then you're going to double jump to cut off that left trajectory. Uh, just make sure when you're double jumping, if you use two different buttons that you're not holding. I was having an issue with that myself just now. I press Y for the first jump, L for the double jump. And then I use C stick from the uh, uh, for the up air. So I'm holding left, jumping, L, L double jump. You know what? Actually, when I'm, when I'm following the trajectory, I don't hold full left. I kind of do a slight left on the full jump. And then L jump, C stick up air. And get good at doing this in this particular motion. Like whether they DI straight up or they go forward or they go left. You want to practice that execution so that when it comes down to it, you can follow that DI and then get the execution perfect. So uh, we have a couple more seconds here. So you get one rep to try to hit this. Okay. 
Now that was basically it, but the up air was a little slow, meaning that you waited until you got to me before you did the up air. But because of the way up air works, it sweeps from back to forward. So what you can do is you can actually start your up air immediately, especially on the super heavies. On other characters, you'll have to be a little bit more tight with the timing on the up air, but against a giant character, uh, you could absolutely just, with your double jump, immediately do the up air, because what happens is uh, the up air starts, and then it sweeps up, and then it sweeps forward. So what you're aiming for is to hit the up air with the part of his head that's either up or forward, because that gives you a little bit more leniency. And it also is the, the timing at which the up air is going to connect. If you think about it, you're never going to hit the instant back part of the up air on someone when you're doing this combo because you're still double jump. You're still like rising to meet them. So you want the top of your head, the very peak of up air, and also the front can also combo. But if you're too late with the up air and hit like the very, very front part of up air, uh, they might have time to air dodge. And that's kind of similar to the timing of what of what it looked like that just happened here but i just want you to buffer your up air just literally at the same time that you're doing your double jump um and yeah and then you should be able to hit it consistently all right i'll give that a shot yeah so the execution should look like this and then just match my execution in terms of speed and also height and up air timing there you go. Yeah, get that up air to come out sooner. As soon as the double jump starts. So the same timing. There you go. Yeah, that's it. And then get good at being able to drift all around with it. So you're comfortable with following the eye. And the way I like to describe the full jump into double jump up air is like you're cutting off your full jump. 75% or like 80% through. Obviously, if you hit the peak, you start to slow down in your speed that you're rising and you also start to fall then afterwards so uh the ex the maximum acceleration of full jump ends somewhere a little bit before the peak of your full jump so that's why we're doing like it's sometimes better to not even let the full jump completely happen and you're canceling that full jump with the double jump and the double jump obviously has much better acceleration like you get up there real quick so that's that's pretty much what we're doing we're, we're maximizing the acceleration to get up to that point, and then you're just up airing at the same time as a double jump. So now, get me, get me again to around 90%. And again, it's always best to practice this with, uh, um, what's it called? With DI. Because obviously it's not going to matter too much. Yeah, that should be fine. You can go ahead and SD. Because it's not going to matter too much. You're not going to see this in a moment where nobody's DIing. So I'm going to actually DI. All right, that was cleaner. That was cleaner. Just make sure that uh, I noticed a little hesitation there, probably because you were like, whoa, he didn't go straight up. Most people you throw might go straight up the ones that you're hitting, but I'm going to mix up my DI. Sometimes I'm going to go forward. Sometimes I'm going to go back. That's the counterplay. That's what people should be doing, but yeah, some people don't it. know. I'd rather, I'd rather practice doing it on something that's moving and actually trying to get right. out the way so I mm -hmm. can like, get used to that. Right, um, of course. Yeah, I just and I just feel like I've been doing it wrong. Like it's yeah. not real, so I, like it's cool that you can know, help me work it out. No, yeah, I, I've seen and helped people practice this so many times. I can literally like, if you literally match my execution with this, you'll see. And I'll, I'll just do it again one more time. Um, let me see. And I'll just do some damage to you here. All right, so that should be good. Okay, minimum on DA is 84. So I'm going to grab you. Feel free, feel free to DI whichever way you like. Yeah, and it should look as clean and as smooth as that. So that was very, very fast. Yeah, and I also good. followed your DI immediately. Did you see how I was drifting with the dust? Yeah, you were like already there before yeah. like, I actually met the alien. So it, everything becomes easier once you're able to just figure out how to align DK's body with that dust line that shoots up. And then it's all very, very simple after that. It's like, yep, I can just, I can make this line. I can make this line. And just get used to the slight drift and the double jump, like making that diagonal, whichever way they DI. And don't be, don't be surprised. They could also do the no DI mix up. So they'll go straight into the air right above you. 
or they will hold up when they're at the higher percents and that will make it really hard to hit them but you can still hit them and they'll go straight up that's actually one of the best mix-ups because you're always expecting them to go either left or right so sometimes they'll go straight up so all right so we'll try one more time uh, i think your execution is getting a little bit better with it just because you probably just needed to see it visually and that should be perfect now i'm somewhere in the middle of the range here so, yeah, go for it. All good, all good. That slipped up, yeah. That's all good. No, the execution, it takes practice. It takes practice. Um, I would recommend to rack up damage quick. Just go, like, down air fast fall over and over again. Yeah. That's good. That's perfect. I'm in percent now. I will die. This is the earliest possible percent, so it should be the easiest for you to connect this combo. Okay. Yeah. So you want to, again, try to make your initial jump closer to following that line. So it, it, this, it does involve reaction. So you have to see that, okay, I see the line behind me. I have to jump and hold back slightly and then double jump. And then, yeah, as you double jump, do the instant up air. Because if you jump either straight or like if you jump the wrong way, it's going to be real hard for you. To, it's going to be basically impossible for you to hit them. So that's why this is like a confirm, but it does take a bit of finesse because you do have to follow their DI with your first jump. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. That's it. That's it. And your up air was a bit late there. So because you, you were probably just hesitating because you haven't gotten the execution fully comfortable yet, but that DI, the following of the DI was perfect. And then again, just up air immediately as as the double down. It's literally the same timing. It should yeah, be buffered. When, I feel like when I'm doing them cleaner, I'm doing them with the C stick. Yes. But when like I feel like I could catch them, I'm press. I'm actually pressing A, so there's like a oh, slight Oh, okay. But I, I, I gotta just work on it. Yeah. So you just have to get your fingers used to the muscle memory, pretty much. But yeah. So that's that's it. That's something you can work on. Uh, you can try one more time, if you want to get go ahead and get that execution down. Try to use the C stick for that up air. That way. Oops. Okay, that's perfect. Try to make sure you use the C stick. That way, when you double jump, you're doing both the double jump and the C stick at the same time. Yeah. And then when you're doing that, you're thinking a little bit more about the inputs than following the eye. So you, your brain just has to literally like figure it out, and then you you'll put it together, and it'll be nice and smooth. So that's up to you if you want to practice that on your own. Otherwise, we no, could. I could practice that on my own. Yeah, it we definitely it definitely time. takes some uh, some execution practice for sure. But now we've pretty much narrowed down what it is that I think you wanted to work on yeah, for the PDKO. I, I can practice that on my own. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to show me some like combo ways that you rack up damage without yeah. using like up air, that'd be pretty cool. Oh yeah. I like to use like up up air juggles. Right. So after down air, yeah, you should go for grab. At this percent that I have you at, it's the perfect percent for two different things. It's cargo up throw double back air and also dash attack double back air. So and on super heavies, you'll have to hit a strong hit dash attack. Um, I don't know if we talked about the attack cancel back air at all. Uh, it's not necessary, but it yeah, does. We went over it last time. Yeah, it does ensure that you will always hit this. There you go. That's it. So uh, yeah, uh, we may or may or may not have looked at this last time, but the the main execution here is after I dash attack you, it's not gonna work at this percent. But notice when DK dash attacks, he opens his mouth at the end. That's when you input the turnaround back air. And you don't have to use attack canceling for this, you can just literally turn around in place. Oh, that's pretty cool to know. I didn't actually know that. We've gone over the, the attack canceling, but yeah. I didn't know that you mm -hmm. could just spin around like that. Yes. That animation, that's pretty cool. This is worth uh this is worth knowing it, for those times when you're playing on connections where a two frame input like an attack cancel is going to be relatively impossible for you to do consistently so just get real good at uh when his mouth opens that's when you can very lightly input a turnaround and actually what you can do um is you can input that turnaround a little bit early the way that i do it is i hold behind dk and then let go when his mouth opens uh you just have to hold very lightly and then let go otherwise he'll start dashing or walking so so uh the, again uh the timing that i'm doing is i'm dashing dash attacking 
And then as during the dash attack, he's always going to move forward. You can't influence how he moves. So you can already, during the dash attack, start holding very slightly back. Almost as if you were doing, like, like one of these kinds of walks. And then let go before his mouth is done opening. And that way you'll do a buffered turnaround in place. And you can let go early, too. Because this game has 10 frames of buffering. So you can start holding it. And then let go. And then just find the time. Just get used to the execution. So that way you can do it back and forth. And then you'll get good at just doing an instant turnaround. That, I think, might be a lot easier. That's something that I, I started teaching recently. Because I think it's easier than attack cancelling. And it, Because attack cancelling is not necessary. But it does two things. It does the buffer turnaround and the back air at the same time. And it's frame perfect. Now, this is not frame perfect. But you can buffer the turnaround. And then as soon as you see DK has turned around, you can now go for the back airs. And you can react to, like, oh, I turned around, let's go for back airs. And you still have combo, you still have time to land that combo. The string will still, will still be there. So, um, that's something that's pretty useful. Um, and again, you're going to do that once you land dash attack at, on mid weights. That's a, at around um, 10 to 15%. And on heavyweights, it's like 15 to like 20 or 15 to 25 percent or so. So, so when you don't have like the window for a PDK mm -hmm. anymore, what do you go for as oh, like your old, like okay. reliable for killing? Got you, got you. Um, so if they're beyond PDKO percent, I guess I would have to just see it in this matchup, particularly. That's gonna be. Probably around this percent. This. You're you're now out of PDKO percent because the window ends at around 98 in this matchup. So this is a good percent to start going for for B reverse down B into up smash. Um that's probably gonna be the most consistent thing. Otherwise, if you find a big whiff opportunity, a big whiff opening, say if you block like a grounded up B in this matchup, side B, up smash is the optimal follow-up on that but yeah at around this percent you want to look for like oh i'm in uh oh i'm in disadvantage or i'm landing you want to go for that b reverse down b into up smash and this is something that you want to have down this input in like both directions mostly because uh also when you have someone on the ledge this is really important also at that same percent that i had you uh when you have that i'm around like Probably like 80 plus. If you spike someone with a down B, they're probably not coming back. 100 plus, I think it'll they'll actually just straight up die. Um, so when you're ledge trapping someone, I know we were talking, I, we were talking a little bit about, about this because you were hitting me with this. You were going for uh, consecutive oh, yeah. down Bs on ledge. I, I, I love the down B arrow hand slap. Even yes. Into, like when you're able to catch it into like a dare or another um, spike after. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, particularly, of course, I'm sure you know, it's not a very strong spike move. So if you want it to out, outright kill them because they were holding onto the ledge too long or they tried to ledge drop jump or they tried to just, you know, I think this covers the two options it covers the most is when they hang on to ledge too long or when they ledge drop and try to jump on stage. So, uh, so when they're at around, I would say around 90, 100, um, you could just do the... Now, the reason we're making it more complicated here is that the dash away baits people into thinking that it's okay for them to ledge drop, jump after you, and chase. Or they they stay patient because they're like, I don't know what, what trickery he's up to, I'm just going to stay on the ledge. And before they get a chance to react, they're getting spiked. So this is something that is... I've started using it a lot more. Um, I've seen Chunky Kong doing this to literally everyone in every single bracket match he has. He spikes someone with this at least once per match. And it's literally, it's it's a flowchart thing. It's like, oh, you're at 90 plus on the ledge? Well, screw ledge trapping. I'm just gonna like dash dance, wait for your iframes to run out, and then be reverse down B. Because if you're still holding ledge, you're dead. And if you got up in place and I timed this at the right time, I can grab you. Or this hit your ledge get up. And then you teched, and then I pivot grab you. Or... It hit your ledge get up, and then I up smash. So there's so many things that you get off this that are good. And that's why the you could change your spacing up a little bit depending on what you're looking for. You can make it a little bit more shallow. 
if you're trying to hit their ledge get up and you're timing it for the ledge get up if you're trying to hit them on ledge you can make it honestly it covers both it covers both there so that's just something in general that not just when they're at 100 like in neutral but when they're on 100 on the ledge it's also good um, okay, yeah, that's good. I'm gonna practice doing that like specific angle you were going for. It's like, not it's a pretty good one. Yeah, it, it's not it's basically the way that I'm inputting it to get it consistently is I'm doing a short hop forward and then I'm letting the stick go to neutral right away. So I'm getting the momentum, but I'm not holding the stick any longer than I have to. Just to get that forward momentum. That way, the next input you could do can be very precise, and it's not going to be affected by input buffering that Smash Ultimate loves to do. So, get that forward momentum with the short hop, without with as little stick drift as possible. You're just jumping forward and then letting go of the stick immediately. That's the most important part right in the beginning. And then you just do the B reverse down B input, which is down and forward and B at the same time, and then quarter circle to down and back. So I think, again, the most important part is letting the stick go to neutral during that short hop. And this is the timing of the inputs. So there, you hear that there's a space between the inputs. It's it's like one, two, one, two. Um, and this, I feel like, should be easier for people with te technical execution. Also, I happen to see some of your stuff on Instagram, so I know that you're a musician. So this should be easier for you to understand rhythms of inputs. Uh, it's kind of like a a little bit of a pause in between. Now this yeah, is this I, is very clean that I'm doing it right now, but it, I'm telling you it takes a lot of practice. It's not easy to do. So, but once you get it down, you'll get a little bit more of an understanding of how to get that consistent B reverse. Again, I think if you're not getting it and you're just getting down Bs like this. Try slowing it down. You're probably pressing the buttons too fast. That's what happens to me. Like when I go like, like that's too fast. You can slow it down. It's better to to get the B reverse late at first and then learn how to do it a little bit earlier than it is to do it too fast because you won't even see yourself turning around and you'll get frustrated. So you can short hop forward and then wait a little bit. And then even if you only get one slap, that's fine as long as you start to see the reverse happening and again you'll be able to see exactly the directions that i'm pressing for the b reverse down b2 if you want to take a look back at this recording um but yeah yeah you're getting the b reverse down b it's definitely easier to practice at first with the full jump because you have more time to do the execution so you don't have to like rush it Um, but yeah, the down B is also very good if you say, um, what is it? Like say you're going for an edge guard. I think we might have seen a little bit of a look at this before. Like I'm going to hit you off stage and then I'm going to make it look like I'm going for a back air on a double jump read. And then you can you can either do a normal down B or you can B reverse it. You jump forward, uh, oops. Cover cover high with back air, jump forward, B reverse down B. Because it looks like you're going back to stage, and then you decide to then bounce off stage, and cover the low recovery, and it really catches people off guard. It's a nice little mix up. Yeah, that's a pretty cool mix up. I like that one. That one's nice. Um, you can also do. B reverse down B off the stage to get yourself a little bit under lower underneath to like a, get it gets you to like a unique position to hit people with back airs. Uh, this will work better depending on the stage. This stage is like nobody's really recovering that low, and if they are, you can just like down B spike them or something. Um, it works better on the stage where the camera is like zoomed out a bit and you can see a bit more under the stage and there's like a little bit less of a wall here so you there's more space underneath so you can actually scoop underneath the stage a little bit more um that's just a little cute little use of the b reverse down b yeah no those are two good i, I like those i'll be practicing those and um, you might as well since we're looking at b reverse down b stuff learn how to do this kind of stuff which this is very precise but once you get really good with the down b b reverse you can slip off ledges with it, and if you time it properly, you can get the first hit 
to actually come out. That was a perfect one. That was a no hitbox, perfect slide off the ledge there. So you can like be in disadvantage, be landing, and then uh, if you time it right, yeah, just like that. You land and then you just kind of walk off like gracefully. And you can't, the cool thing about it is that you are without your double jump, you're in disadvantage, and then you do B reverse down B and then you get your jumps back or you get your double jump back. Um, so again, that's pretty sweet. Um, I was wondering if we had something like that because we've been seeing a lot of like characters that can teleport cancel off like platforms like that. And I was wondering if we could yeah. do something. This is the coolest Somewhat thing similar. that we can do. Yeah, we get our jump back with stuff like that. It's not easy. If you really want to test your execution, I would do it on the ledge. And you could do something like that. Uh, sometimes you get a slow drift, but other times you get the really fast one. And if you miss, you'll just have to up B right away. Otherwise, you have SD. That's the perfect one. So this is kind of the stuff I do to, to practice uh, technical execution. Um, I'll grab ledge, I'll reverse charge cancel, I'll jump. I use Z to jump here, because I find it to be easier. Um, but yeah, you could do the... What is it? So I'm doing a couple different things there. So I'm dropping off the ledge, doing B reverse down B, ledge slip. Um, getting my double jump back, because I touched the ledge, the floor. And then I double jump back air into the ledge with instant uh, ledge grab side B. And then I let go of the ledge with reverse charge cancel and then I jump with whatever button you're comfortable jumping with. It's just a good way to practice all of the different kinds of technical execution with DK on the ledge. It gets your reverse charge cancels, it gets your... The B reverse down B is very excessive, very swaggy. You don't have to do it, but uh, I find that it's very useful to be comfortable with your movement and your spacing with B reverse down B. Also, it's very, very rare, and I wouldn't expect to do this often, but you can get B reverse down B, ledge slip. Uh, it's not even a ledge slip, really, because you're hitting the first slap. No, it is a ledge slip. So you hit the first slap as you're canceling off the platform, and you can hit someone with it, and as you're falling, it'll combo into up air or back air. That I've done, and it's very precise, but it's so cool. Like, if you have it, if you're really feeling yourself, and you're getting your movement down, you were just already doing a cancel. There, that, the first slap came out and that was it. The second one didn't come out. You hear it, it goes Whoosh. When that comes out, that can hit someone if they jump up trying to hit you. It slaps them. Um, and then as you reverse down, let me just see. It's a little, little tricky. Can't get the B reverse consistently right now, but. Yeah, you could do something like that. That will combo if you get the first hit. Or you could... And then go straight into the back air if you want. Again, ex extremely rare. If you ever hit one of those, save the replay and like upload it somewhere. Because it's so... It's like the, one of the coolest things that DK can do. But it's just so entirely precise. Um, but again, just practice that B reverse down B movement. And try yeah. to employ it into your game. It's one yeah, of DK's smoothest... First thing I thought about doing was doing an up air to, to get at them, mm -hmm. to like capitalize mm -hmm. on somebody. Absolutely. Because um, then you, you can, can do what you were doing at the ledge maybe like five more times. Sure. So I can like sure, absolutely. check right. that out and then like lab that out the way you move. Because I like that mix up on the ledge. Yeah. So I was doing jump onto stage. So first thing I'm doing is ledge drop by pressing back and then jumping onto stage by holding forward. And then I'm doing the B reverse down B at a very delayed timing so that I get the ledge slip. Uh, you, there are certain times, yeah, that one you can, yeah, that that one right there is the best one where you get a boost off the ledge. Otherwise you might get this slow one. It means you just didn't time the B reverse down B properly. If you overshoot it, it means you did it too early. Yeah, this one's tricky to get the right timing. There it is. So now, once you slip off with a good speed, back air, side B, grab ledge, and then I like to drop from ledge by pressing back, and then B. So just back and B literally does the reverse charge cancel for you, just like that. And then as soon as you start charging, you can jump immediately. You don't have to wait at all. And then I already grabbed ledge five times, so that's why I died. But, uh, so yeah, I press back and B, and then jump immediately. And then... When you jump, just make sure that you're not holding back immediately, because if you hold back, you'll do one of these jumps. And if your execution is not 
perfect, you'll get like stuck under the stage or stuck on the wall. So when you do that jump, that okay. double jump, you want to jump straight into the air. Like this. And then drift onto the stage afterwards. And if you get it perfect, you can actually get a lot more height. It's a little bit harder to do on this stage, I think, because the camera is zoomed out. I'm like, if you come a little bit closer to this ledge, the camera will zoom, will zoom in for us. Or I can just go over here. Yeah. Now... Hold on a second. My, my controls just, like, changed. Oh, no. <laughs> so this is something that's really worth practicing, just execution-wise because it'll get your reverse charge cancels really clean and it also gives you that mix up where you can get onto stage. You can back air onto stage. Um, the, the mix ups I like to do out of this the most are, of course, I like to do back air once to make them fear it. And then after that, when they're respecting the back air, you can go for side B out of it. And you can actually just fake it out so hard that you can drift and then do the side B and like they'll drop shield or their shield will get broken. Or if they're holding shield and they're crowding and they're real close but they have a full shield, like go ahead and come close to the ledge. Oh. Not gonna make that. Um, so you're respecting my back air here so that's why you're gonna shield. And then you can do that. So you can make it look like you're going to back air by turning around and then you just go for up B instead and in response to reacting to their shield. So you get a lot of cool little mix ups out of this. That being said, if they ever see you doing something cute like this, you can absolutely just get spiked. So this is like a mix up. It's like kind of similar to a weight on ledge, but it's also just like a mind game because you're doing something and they might be like frozen in their in their shoes. They're like, they're like, what is he doing? Like, I need to pay attention to what he's doing. And try to react so and that's where the mix-up comes in because when you're turned backwards you have back air side b or up b or you could just empty landing and grab them like you can do some cool stuff out of it just as a mix-up um but it works better when they give you space i would say because if they're crowding ledge they could just be like all right he's doing stuff down air you know um but yeah um definitely just technical execution stuff is worth practicing with dk i think Um, also this, if we didn't talk about it, once you have the application of the reverse charge cancel down, you could cargo down throw people into instant, instant reverse charge cancel, double jump back air. You can also, I think we probably did go over this last time because I remember maybe going over this one a little bit. Oops. So you can throw someone off the stage. Uh, I didn't quite get the momentum there. And if they decide to go for an instant recovery to ledge, you can reverse back air and then like jump onto stage with it. Um, something else cool that DK can do that, speaking of Proctavia coming through with the 47 months, thank you Proctavia, this is Proctavia's favorite. So that was a reverse charge cancel into instant double jump forward air, edge guard. So you could do this to people. This actually works really well in the DK ditto. Like, oh, the DK is coming back. Turn around, reverse charge. Obviously you can't do it with the full charge. And then you just instant double jump while committing full forward toward the blast zone. And into C stick forward air. It's really fun and it's very belligerent. And if you don't do it right, you SD. But it's a... Uh, Unnecessary, but good. No, it's pretty cool. Yeah, see, I, I like more technical applications. I'm trying to get more things like that down. I've been practicing them. Then there's like a few other characters, but like for DK, I'm not really too sure of anything like that. So that's pretty useful. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I like to show again, I'm, I'm all about edge guarding if you couldn't tell, but um, I like all the different applications of down B from ledge, which is just let go by pressing back and then you could do a standard just down B spike on all different kinds of heights. That's a low height. You can do a high one. You could do this one. This scoops people. And also gives you better stage position. So to do this one, you drop from ledge. Again, 
jump onto stage with forward momentum, and then just do a down and back B. You don't have to do any sort of B reverse or anything. It's just a normal buffered pivot, which is just jump and then down and back B at the same time. So all I'm doing is this pretty much, but just onto the stage. I'm letting go of the ledge first and then jumping forward like this and doing a down B. And to get the backwards facing down B, you just press down and behind DK and B at the same time. Which is a 45 degree angle down back while jumping, jump forward and then down and left B or jump left and then down and right B, 45 degree angle. So what I'm doing from ledge is release by pressing back or in this case left, then jump forward. And then immediately as soon as I get the momentum of jumping forward, before you even see the jump happen, I'm pressing down B. Again, buffered, similar to the way we were doing double jump up airs. At the same time you press your double jump, you, in you input the down and back B input. This one is a very subtle one, but it's also one of the best ones because it gets you from ledge into edge guarding them and getting you stage position. Yeah. So you want that, that forward drift onto stage to happen first, and then you hit down B. And you just practice that. And also you could you could mix it up a little bit, you can jump forward, and you can be reverse it if you want to get a little bit more forward range if you want to scoop them that way. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different things you could do with the down B, but honestly, this one suffices. Uh, especially when you're fighting hero, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting. You just kind of guess, like, okay, are they coming this way, or are they coming this way? And that's really all you have to do, is like, are they going to come on the left or the right of me? You just wait, wait, wait. They're at high enough percent to die from this. Oh, he's coming this way? Cool. That's good to know, because I already have fun. Like fighting heroes and edge guarding them, so that's really that's pretty cool to know that. Yeah, he he has those giant tornadoes that he shoots out, so it's like if you try to drop too early, like he could still be stalling and you will miss him. So it's actually better to just wait on ledge if they went really really low because they were respecting you dropping with like a nair or a down b already, but they went so low that you couldn't chase them. But then eventually they have to shoot up toward you, so you can just put out your meatiest spike move and then just just clip him. But uh. But yeah, man. I'll, I'll keep it in mind. I'm gonna start practicing more of the technical stuff, so I'll I'll get it down. Cool, cool. Yeah, uh, keep in mind. Take a look at those percents. That's the most important thing. Not just when you're going for PDKOs, but like whenever you get a grab. Um, like if you get a grab at zero, you know you can really only do up air, or some characters you can do nair, like the bigger characters. But most characters you have to do up air to get a true combo. Uh. But then the 10 or 15% on midweights and the 15 through 25% on heavyweights, you can do the cargo up throw, double back air, or the back air down air. If you want to overextend or are really like try to go for the maximum on the advantage, if you pay attention to their disadvantage state, if they're mashing buttons, are they mashing nares, up airs, air dodges into the platform? That's when you can go for down airs after. Um, but again, the double back air is a combo, so you can always just do that. But um, yeah, man, it was great having you. Thanks for coming through again, and uh, best of luck with everything. All right, man. Take care. Have a All good right. one. Have a good one. Peace.